Okay, so November is here. I don't know if anyone's excited about the U.S. election. Oh my god, I'm gonna do it. Um, I think most people are pretty scared. Um, no matter who you're siding with, because the campaign slash propaganda of both sides is if the other person gets in, everything's fucked. Not just the U.S., but the entire globe. And, I mean, depending on your your uh, worldview both can be true like it can be true for either camp i think the problem is kind of the umbrella politics of of big parties two-party system like this is because you're always going to get something you don't like in there um and i think there's toxicity on both sides obviously um it looks like harris might have a little bit of kind of what trump had in 2016 with people not wanting to admit their voting um, for Harris, um, I remember that was a phenomenon with uh, Trump's election against Hillary Clinton, and I think a lot of um, straight men are obviously getting shamed for uh, supporting Harris because it's kind of been split into almost gender roles. It's been a big part of uh, the campaign, and obviously a, a woman against a man. Trump, obviously, um, his campaign goes towards a lot of masculinity and... Um, that things need to be more um, grounded in reality, which, which I mean, I don't know if Harris really let in all the people um, that they're saying. It's hard to to keep up. One side says this, one side says this, and in the information age that we have now, we kind of are online and we look at one site that says it's a fact, one side says it's opinion, one side that says it's wrong. Um, different fact checkers, kind of the info wars type thing. So you don't really know what's going on. But to get back to the polling, I think is um, Harris might have a lot of support with women who don't want to admit um, that they support Harris and they'll either go along with their husband or um, maybe they're freaked out to say it publicly because Trump's been saying some crazy stuff um, here and there. And I think straight men as well. So I think there might be kind of Harris supporter supporters that are kind of closeted supporters for Harris, um, so to speak, which might give her a bump. But the electrical, electrical, um, electoral uh, college is in Trump's favor, I think, at least according to the polling, because he only needs really Pennsylvania um, in most projections, most um uh, routes to uh, victory um, and Pennsylvania went to Biden last time and it went to Trump the time before it's traditionally a blue state some people are speculating because it has a large Puerto Rican um, population that that might um, tip it to Harris um, because of the kill Tony um, joke that has offended a lot of people it hasn't offended a lot of people too there's info wars on that too there's people um, on X that are getting retweeted by uh, Elon that their Puerto Rican weren't offended. Then there's Puerto Rican um, R&B singers and Jennifer Lopez and I think a few others that came out and said, well, we were thinking about voting for Trump, but now no way. And then now they're campaigning with Harris. Um, I think Fat Joe was in that as well. He said, this is what they think of you. And then he posted like Trump throwing paper towels at Puerto Ricans. And he did block the aid for um, after Hurricane um Myra or Mara or something like that um in 2017 so I don't know how big that voting block is I think it's about 800,000 um I don't know if that's total between the two states the two swing states that could matter the most with Puerto Ricans or Florida and Pennsylvania which are swing states Florida obviously is not nearly as big of a swing state as Pennsylvania would be and it's definitely all it's not always one Republican but most of the time I think Trump has like a five or six point lead there which is bigger than his leads in Pennsylvania and Wisconsin and all the others which are like point one or something like that in, in the polls um, but the theory that I kind of am speculating on is that there might be people that are voting for Harris that aren't saying it because in the how polling got so wrong in 2016 is people were afraid to say that they were going to vote for Trump because he was saying so many 
crazy things. He was making fun of like handicapped people and, and mocking them and, and things like that. So people were like, oh, no, I'm never never going to vote for that guy. But really, they they voted for him. And I think the same thing might happen with Harris. Um, I don't know if there's going to be violence or if there's going to be a coup or if there's going to be anything like that. Um, Trump really knows how to rile up a crowd. He knows how to say the right thing at the right time. Um, I'm not sure if he actually could end the war in Ukraine. Um, I'm not sure if he really could bring um, factories back. I, I don't know enough about economics to know if the tariffs thing will work. Um, it does at least appear um, that it would raise the deficit to get rid of income tax and, and rely on tariffs. Um, I think tariffs, um, I think China has the, the bigger side of the stick when it comes to that. They have way more people um more than double of the united states and they more or less use slave labor and i think trump's pivot to towards a job-based economy is almost utopian thinking after having you know 60 years plus of of what kind of nixon and those guys implemented um, policy wise in the united states i think to build that many factories and, and get that many people employed as well as um, deporting millions of people would be I don't think it can be done and I think if it if it could be done it would be so messy and you'd have to bring in the National Guard um, with probably the CIA and it'd be if, if the reports of armed gang like Venezuelan gangs taking over apartment complexes are real like it would actually be like martial law there would be like shootouts on the street people you know just it would it would be really messy it wouldn't be clear cut so I'm not sure if he's actually having a plan there or it, what he's going to do and then I think also the kind of the promise that's not being said because it doesn't need to be said is kind of um, the tariffs will get um, foreign competitors out of the United States bring the jobs home and there will be so many factories um, so many um, jobs um, it'll be an abundance of jobs where it would be almost utopian where if you don't like this job you can just go to another job um, the job the inflation will be lower the jobs will pay higher so you can have more freedom more liberty to choose and, and travel if you want and go all over America getting different jobs and it would be an abundance of jobs and opportunity um, I'm not sure if if that's actually the case because if you're cutting so many social services and so many um and you're not giving if you're giving tax cuts to corporations with with the assumption that they're going to raise wages you're you're really counting on on their their goodness um because um japan did a similar thing where um they had a, a conservative right-wing government i think this was like well they still do but i think what this policy was maybe 20 years ago and they gave tax cuts to corporations um but in the fine print it it um actually said that to get the tax cuts they needed to raise the wages of their lower uh workers and i don't think trump or his administration has anything like that i think it's just a blanket tax cut and um, with the cutting of social services as well, you might have pressure to get rid of minimum wage. You might have um, almost company towns again, where you're you're buying food and things from from the the store that you're that you are the factory that you're you're working at. It might be a return to that. So it can actually get quite dystopian quite fast. Where instead of kind of this abundance of jobs, where you're free to go anywhere and and work your way to the top, you're actually stuck. At one factory working you know 60 70 hours a week um, you're buying your supplies from that um, place there's no minimum wage there's no social services anymore and you're kind of caught in into something you're similar to what authoritarian china is like um and i think that might be i think that that could be trump's shadow so to speak and that might be kind of um if he does go wrong and if people are right about him being a fascist um i'm not sure if they are he's definitely putting himself in a position to be a strong man um whether he um tries to be a leader for everyone or if he actually has um the retribution against democrats and he he cuts all these things and if that um project whatever is actually true i don't think it is i don't think it's his policy but i think a lot of his policies can lead to something similar to that or even worse if they go 
the way that kind of the doomer side of Democrats are saying that it can. So it's something definitely to pay attention to. Um, obviously, um, Harris, if there is an open border, that's not good as well. Um, war in Ukraine, the war is spir sp spiraling out of control, definitely not good. So, I mean, but I'm not sure if you want Russia to have Ukraine e either. So it's, it's a very um, tense moment with a lot of mis misinformation. There's no center that are kind of trying to um, unify both both sides of the aisle in, in a way that can actually come up with solutions for this. It seems very divisive, obviously. Um, so I don't know who's going to win. That's kind of a little bit of a, a thinking out loud about some things that can go wrong. I think it is a powder keg. I think... Um, if Trump loses, he will deny that he loses. Um, and if Harris wins, I don't know if she's rallied enough young men to even um, be strong enough to actually um, take the country if there is like an actual pushback. So I think that there's all eyes on that because Trump obviously has threatened uh, NATO and um, allies with the military spending and, and other things, um, Canada with some uh, disputes with uh, timber um, and uh, dairy, as well as um, water sharing agreements. Um, I think he did say that he would trade Puerto Rico for Greenland um, at one point, which is another thing that came up after the Hitchcliffe joke. Um, so there's a lot, there's a lot there, um, and I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen with foreign policy. North Korean troops are now in Ukraine. Um, how far Russia could get into into Ukraine, Taiwan, um, the Middle East, you know, just trade um, globally. Um, Putin has now his BRICS currency that he's going to try to unveil. Um, China and Russia are having a lot of influence in South America, which traditionally any um, Soviet or uh, international aid or influence in South America would be a toppling of a dictatorship, a coup. Um, America, America doesn't really have that clout anymore, or I don't, I'm not sure if it's, if it's um, wars behind the scenes internally with the CIA and, and, and things. And I'm not saying that you want to be doing that. I'm just saying that there is going to be expansionism um, of, of Russia if if Trump can't get out of the conflict in the right way. And the stick is is bigger in Russia's favor and China's favor and everyone's favor. And I'm not sure if there's a solution on either side. The, the gender correcting sur uh, surgeries in school and if, if they're actually giving that to illegal immigrants that are, are locked up, that's a question mark there. What's going on there? That doesn't seem eth ethical. That doesn't seem right to be spending taxpayers payers dollars on that um so i i don't know what's going to happen but i think what's going to happen is people are going to be um quite disappointed either way i think inflation is going to go up either way i think there's going to be civil disrupt um uh unrest um in the next few years I, i'm very doomer on it to be honest, I'm, I'm very anxious. I'm very doomer. I think that a world war might happen. Um, and this might just be the way we're thinking about it because um, it goes into the Trump derangement syndrome kind of meme is people can be thinking doomer of Trump and as well on the other side, people doomer of Harris and, and none of this comes to fruition for which I'm not even going to say that like I, I'm, I'm mumble mouth a lot of the time. But um, anyways. I think this battery is about to die, so I got to end this now. I should have ended it probably like six minutes ago or maybe not even filmed it at all. But I'm going to post it, and I the point of this video was the, the Harris vote might be slightly bigger than, than anticipated, but it also could be, you know, anything. It's hard to say. People were burning ballot boxes. There's lots of things going on. Anyways, peace out. Bye. God bless.